Most of the reactions that we talk about in this chapter are going to involve weak neutral nucleophiles. So that means we're going to be looking at things like water, alcohols, and amines. We're going to start by looking at the addition of water to aldehydes and ketones. So this first compound where we have um, this is kind of an aldehyde with two hydrogen. This is known as formaldehyde. And if we add water to this, this is going to be an equilibrium process. And in this case, the equilibrium will favor the product. So I'm going to draw a long arrow to the product, a short arrow to the starting material. The water will add across this double bond. So if I draw it a little bit differently here and add the H and the OH and draw in my curved arrows, I'm going to form a bond to the hydrogen and a bond to the OH. If we draw the product, so what was the carbonyl oxygen? It takes a proton from the water and then the other OH gets bonded in. So this product, where we have two alcohols on the same carbon, is known as a hydrate. Or it's sometimes called a geminal diol. Or abbreviated a gem diol. So this reaction is known as a hydration because we are adding water across the pi bond. And if you just let formaldehyde set in the presence of water, this reaction is going to take place. And in fact, about 99 or greater than 99% of the molecules will be in the hydrate form. And then less than 1% will be in the formaldehyde form. And this will happen just in the presence of water. We can speed this reaction up by adding acid or base to catalyze the reaction. And we're eventually going to look at the mechanism for this addition under neutral conditions, and then under acidic conditions, and then basic conditions. So this is just kind of a shortcut that I did up here. This isn't the true mechanism for the reaction. Before we get into the mechanisms, I do want to talk a little bit about the various carbonyl compounds and relative percentages of hydrate that forms. So your guiding principle here is the fact that a less stable carbonyl is more reactive and will give a larger percentage of hydrate versus a more stable carbonyl that wants to stay as is and it won't give a very high percentage of hydrate. So in the first example, we have a ketone, just acetone. And let's go ahead and draw the hydrate for this. Okay, so that's different than the formaldehyde hydrate because we've added the carbon groups. And we know that ketones are more stable than aldehydes. And because of that, this ketone and its electron donating groups, even though slight, they prefer to stick around as is, and the ketone is favored. So for this particular reaction, the equilibrium lies to the side of the ketone. And this one, in fact, is greater than 99% ketone form, less than 1% hydrate form. So I'll just add a note that the electron donating groups, the methyl groups, stabilize the carbonyl, making it happy as is, so it doesn't really want to go to the hydrate form. Now, if we look at our second example, where we have the CF3 group, that having the three fluorines on the carbon, that's an electronegative group or very electron withdrawing group. 
The hydrogen is an electron withdrawing group. So we're pulling electrons away from the carbonyl. The electron withdrawing groups destabilize the carbonyl. So now let's draw the hydrate of this one. And in this case, the equilibrium lies heavily toward the hydrate. Greater than 99.9%. And less than 0.1% in the form of the carbonyl. So the electron withdrawing groups destabilize the carbonyl. That makes the carbonyl more reactive and pushes the reaction toward the hydrate. Um, for this particular reaction, you know, sticking with aldehydes and ketones, the electron withdrawing groups that we're going to generally see will be things like hydrogen or CX3. Um, the reason I don't include things like chlorine or oxygen is because once you add a chlorine or oxygen here, this is no longer an aldehyde or a ketone. It's one of the carboxylic acid derivatives.